Welcome to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon. An SS7 attack exploits vulnerabilities in the signaling system. 7. SS7 protocol, used in telecommunication networks. His protocol facilitates communication between different networks for call setup, SMS delivery and roaming. Attackers gain access to the SS7 network, often through hacking or insider threats, and can then intercept calls and messages, redirect calls or access SMS messages, including sensitive information like two-factor authentication codes, track location, determine the real-time location of a target's mobile phone, SS7, short for Signaling System 7, is a protocol telecom companies use to communicate with each other. As an internet working protocol between big companies, it contains a high degree of trust. That is, if you're allowed to speak SS7 to a server at all, you're allowed to say almost anything you want with it. When people speak of SS7 attacks, they usually mean telling another telecom to route a number to you. You can use this to bypass SMS MFA. If I can tell Google's upstream phone provider that I own your phone number, then when I try to log into your Google account, I'll get the code texted to me, not you. This isn't even a high privilege or suspicious activity in SS7. After all, every time your phone roams to some other company's cell tower, it needs to tell the other telecoms, hey, I've got this number now. It's routine. There are several international telecoms with less than stellar reputations that people have hacked into, or even just bought SS7 access from, to steal SMS MFA codes at scale. There's not a lot you can do about this as a defender, other than relying on app-based or U2 FMFA tokens rather than using SMS. Hacking phone software. Whether hackers sneak it onto your phone by physically accessing your phone or by tricking you into installing it via a phony app, a sketchy website or a phishing attack, hacking software can create problems for you in a couple of ways. Keylogging. In the hands of a hacker, keylogging works like a stalker by snooping information as you type, tap, and even talk on your phone. Trojans. Trojans are types of malware that can be disguised in your phone to extract important data such as credit card account details or personal information. Some possible signs of hacking software on your phone include a battery that drains way too quickly, your phone runs a little sluggish or gets hot, apps quit suddenly or your phone shuts off and turns back on. You see unrecognized data, text, or other charges on your bill. SIM card swapping. In August of 2024, the CEO of Twitter had his SIM card hacked by SIM card swapping scam. SIM card swapping occurs when a hacker contacts your phone provider, pretends to be you, and then asks for a replacement SIM card. Once the provider sends the new SIM to the hacker, the old SIM card will be deactivated and your phone number will be effectively stolen. This means the hacker has taken control of your phone calls, messages, and so forth. This method of hacking requires the seemingly not-so-easy task of impersonating someone else, yet clearly it happened to the CEO of a major tech company. Protecting your personal info and identity online can help prevent hackers from impersonating you to pull off this and other crimes. Professional hackers can use dedicated technologies that search for vulnerable mobile devices with an open Bluetooth connection. Hackers can pull off these attacks when they are within range of your phone up to 30 feet away, usually in a populated area. When hackers make a Bluetooth connection to your phone, they can possibly access your data and info, yet that data and info must be downloaded while the phone is within range. As you probably gathered, this is a more sophisticated attack given the effort and technology involved. Phishing attacks. These are a classic form of attack. In fact, hackers have leveled them at our computers for years now too. Phishing is where hackers impersonate a company or trusted individual to get access to your accounts or personal info or both. And these attacks take many forms, like emails, texts, instant messages and so forth, some of which can look really legitimate. Common to them are links to bogus sites that attempt to trick you into handing over that info or that install malware to wreak havoc on your device, or likewise, steal information. Learning how to spot a phishing attack is one way to keep yourself from falling victim to one. Location tracking through the SS. Seven Network refers to the ability of attackers to determine a mobile phone user's real-time location by exploiting vulnerabilities in the signaling system, 7SS7 protocol. Here's how it works. One. 
Access to SS7. Attackers gain access to the SS7 network, often through compromised telecom infrastructure or by exploiting weak security protocols. 1. Location requests. Once inside, attackers can send specific commands to request the location of a target's mobile device. This can include 2.1. Location updates. Requesting updates on the user's location based on cell tower triangulation. 2.2. Tracking via HLR. Accessing the home location register, HLR, which stores subscriber information, including current location data. 1. Real-time tracking. The attacker can continuously monitor the target's location as they move, often without the victim's knowledge. 1. Potential impact. This capability poses serious privacy risks, enabling stalking, unauthorized surveillance, or targeting for further attacks. Ethical hackers analyze SS7 vulnerabilities to help telecom companies and organizations secure their infrastructure. Here are some ways SS7 is examined in ethical hacking. Call interception. SS7 vulnerabilities can be exploited to intercept voice calls and listen to private conversations. Ethical hackers test this by simulating such attacks to identify and report weaknesses. SMS interception. Hackers can intercept text messages, including two-factor authentication, two FA codes used for securing online accounts. Ethical hackers work to ensure companies patch these loopholes to prevent unauthorized access to sensitive information. Location tracking. SS7 can be used to track a user's location anywhere in the world. Ethical hackers simulate location tracking attacks to show how hackers can locate individuals through their phones and help develop countermeasures. Account takeovers. Since 2FA often relies on SMS codes, SS7 attacks can be used to hijack online accounts. Ethical hackers expose how these SS7-based attacks can compromise security and assist organizations in moving to more secure methods like app-based authentication. Denial of service, DOS attacks. SS7 vulnerabilities can also lead to DOS attacks, disrupting communication services. Ethical hackers explore these possibilities to prevent widespread outages caused by malicious hackers. Section 6. Cracks in the Network SS7. Vulnerabilities and Real-World Attacks. The vulnerabilities in SS7 have led to real-world attacks with far more serious consequences than just free calls. Hackers have exploited these vulnerabilities to intercept calls and messages, track individuals' locations, and even drain bank accounts. One high-profile example of an SS7 attack involved the theft of funds from bank accounts. Hackers exploited SS7 vulnerabilities to intercept two-factor authentication codes sent via SMS messages. By gaining access to these codes, they could bypass security measures and gain unauthorized access to victims' bank accounts. These attacks highlighted the potential for significant financial damage through SS7 hacking. They also demonstrated that anyone relying on SMS-based two-factor authentication for sensitive accounts, like banking or email, could be at risk. The revelation of these attacks spurred telecommunication companies and governments to take action. Increased efforts were made to patch vulnerabilities and implement stronger security measures to protect SS7 networks. However, the cat-and-mouse game between security researchers and hackers continues, as new vulnerabilities are constantly being discovered and exploited. Section 7. Listening in, intercepting calls and messages with SS7. One of the most concerning aspects of SS7 vulnerabilities is the ability to intercept calls and messages. Hackers can exploit SS7 to listen in on conversations, read text messages, and even access voicemail messages without ever physically interacting with the victim's device. This type of attack is possible because SS7 handles the routing and connection of calls and messages. By manipulating SS7 messages, hackers can reroute calls and messages to their own devices, effectively eavesdropping on the communication. Imagine a scenario where a hacker targets a journalist or activist. By intercepting their calls and messages, the hacker can gain access to sensitive information, potentially putting the individual and their sources at risk. The ability to intercept communications through SS7 poses a significant threat to privacy and security. It highlights the importance of encrypting sensitive communications whenever possible. Using end-to-end -end encrypted messaging apps, for example, can help protect conversations from being intercepted, 
even if the SS7 network is compromised. Section 8. Tracking your every move location monitoring via SS7. In addition to intercepting communications, SS7 vulnerabilities can also be exploited for location tracking. By sending specially crafted SS7 messages, hackers can request the location of a mobile device from the telecommunication provider. This location data can be surprisingly accurate, often providing the hacker with the device's location within a few hundred meters. This information can be used for various malicious purposes, such as stalking, kidnapping, or even corporate espionage. The ability to track individuals' locations without their knowledge or consent is a serious privacy concern. It raises questions about the security of our location data and the potential for abuse by governments and private entities. While some location tracking through SS7 might be considered legitimate for law enforcement purposes, the potential for misuse is undeniable. It highlights the need for stronger legal frameworks and oversight to prevent the abuse of these powerful surveillance capabilities. Next steps in cybersecurity. The vulnerabilities in SS7 highlight the importance of cybersecurity awareness. Be mindful of the information you share online. Avoid sharing sensitive information through unencrypted channels. Enable two-factor authentication whenever possible. Use end-to-end -end encrypted messaging apps for sensitive conversations. Keep your devices and software up to date. Stay informed about cybersecurity.